After Chadwick Boseman died in 2020 of stage 4 colon cancer, the future of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever was suddenly up in the air. A script for the highly anticipated sequel to Black Panther, the billion-dollar grossing cultural phenomenon, had already been written. The story was said to be a clash between two kings, Bozeman's T'Challa the Black Panther and Namor the Submariner, the super-powered mutant king of Marvel's seas. The two superheroes are intense rivals within the pages of Marvel Comics, and the movie showdown was going to be an event just as big as any Avengers movie. Writer-director Ryan Coogler and his co-writer Joe Robert Cole were left with the difficult task of finding a new story after the death of its titular star. Recasting Boseman was never considered. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige told Empire Magazine that it just felt like it was much too soon to recast, a sentiment that was shared by Coogler and many of the cast members. A CGI version of Boseman's King T'Challa was also not on the table, leaving Coogler and Cole with the only option that felt like it could properly pay respect to the friend everyone had just lost, incorporating Boseman's death into the story itself. As a result, Wakanda Forever is a film about death, the grief that comes with it in succession of power in the most difficult of circumstances. It was very therapeutic, very cathartic, to be able to use what was going on in our lives and the work, the vulnerability, the strength, the grief of TH. As the movie begins, King T'Challa of Wakanda has died, and the women of Wakanda, Queen Ramonda, Bassett, Princess Shuri, Letitia Wright, Nakia, Lapita Nyong'o, and Okoye, Danagurira, leader of the elite all-female Wakandan warriors the Dora Milaje, are left to mourn while they must continue. The Black Panther's death is not a spoiler. It has long been known since Kubler and Cole began their rewrite that the character's death would be a part of the story, 